Uh, you will excuse me before the salutation. I want to make two disclaimer. One, I used to act in the school drama. <laughs> Luckily, there were no smartphones because I was playing a very interesting role, which I will not wish you to know. <laughs> uh, the second one is, uh, my daughter asked me, why do you carry this thing? And uh, you're supposed to be technologically compliant. You should be with an iPad and not hard print. And I told her that I have one big weakness when I was in primary school. Every time I used to play football, when I come back, my geometry state has been stolen. I lose a pen. So I have that phobia of carrying this gadget. I think that I'll lose them. Uh, I'm better off with this because it is here. When you want to snatch it, I can feel it. Uh, the chief guest, Honorable uh, Musale Mudavadi, uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary, I will adopt the protocol observed. The list is long. I would like to thank you, sir, for honoring this invite. We didn't have to go through much protocol to get you. I just talked to your PA, uh, your chief of staff, and uh, within a short time, he told me, count it done. Uh, we really thank you, sir. Uh, Bishop Oginde, my chairman, the presence of all of you here I don't see an empty seat. There are few. It tells you first that you respect ESCC, and that's why you have honored this invite. Second is that you are keen on the importance on the fight against corruption. So I take this great pride to stand before you today in the official launching of our strategic plan of 2023-2028, which will guide us in the next five years. We have spent adequate time in the formulation of this uh, plan, giving ourselves space where we interacted with all stakeholders so that our children will have a future. You've just seen from this drama, uh, as much as it was very hilarious, this is what goes on in the public. If it is a birth certificate, if it is police extortion at the roadblocks, somebody told me that corruption is an invisible crime because you don't see the giver and the taker. And I corrected him. I told him in the developing country, it is a visible crime because you are stopped by the policeman extorting in front of everybody. You go for a bus certificate, you are told it's not available. You go for these services, you are told the printer is not working you go to all kinds of manners. So in the developing country, corruption is a visible crime. Maybe in the advanced country, because everything that is advanced, maybe even corruption is done in an advanced way. So we held numerous consultations, uh, and people presented their views, where we want to go, where we are, where we are right now, and where we are coming from, and where we want to be. And uh, we arrived that the main theme of this strategic plan will be an integrity and value-driven Kenyan society. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each one and every one of you who participated in one way or another in the contribution of the realization of this strategic plan that today we are very proud we are ready for the launching. In particular, I also would like to thank the people who have partnered with us. And uh, here I'm talking about the European Union, and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. We thank you, European Union. We thank you, UNODC. Your Excellencies, the plan comes with the 20th anniversary since Kenya signed and ratified the United Nations Convention Against Crime and Corruption, commonly referred as UNCAC, following its adoption by the General, UN General Assembly on 31st October uh, 2003. That is, we are talking of next month, 31st October, will be marking 20 years. So in the last two decade, decades, Kenya has covered a lot on the ground of its effort in the fight against corruption. Uh, somebody may say this is subject to argument. One person asked me, what is the progress in the fight against corruption in Kenya? And I keep on referring, some of my colleagues know what I talk about. I say, look here, uh, the clock has got several. There is the one for the hour, the one for the minutes, and the one for the seconds. Kenyans want to see the fight against corruption in the way the, the stick for the seconds move, because it's so visible. 
for our side, we say it is moving in the right direction, of course, at the pace of the, one, the, 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 the stick for the, the hour. It takes time. You cannot see it visibly moving, but we are heading in the right direction. How do we go about it? We may have the best strategic plan on earth. We can have all the instruments, but I keep on saying that the fight against corruption is just like the way a human being manages uh, a lifestyle disease or the way our children get uh, educated. And uh, Professor Kiyama is here. He will attest to that. You can have the best school, but a school depends on four factors. The parents or guidance, the, gu the, the, the guidance, the, the gui I mean the, the guardian or parents, the pupil, the teachers, and the facilities. If you have the four, you will have the best results. Uh, likewise, for you to manage a lifestyle disease, there is the doctor, there's yourself, and there's the environment. The doctor will give you some pills and he will tell you don't take this food, make sure you don't take a lot of salt, and then there's that self-discipline of yourself and those who live immediate, uh, immediate family members. So if you're told don't take alcohol, and when you go home, the first thing you open the, fr uh, the fridge is full of bottles of Tuskers and what, uh, wine and whatever, you get tempted. So the people who stay with you contribute for you not to control that disease. So at a national level, in strategic level, let us look at the fight against corruption in the three main aspect, which I keep on talking about. It may not be in my speech, but I really emphasize that if we want to counter this monster called corruption, there are three main pillars. The political culture of this country must change. If for you to get a political seat, you must go on and bribe, uh, use uncouth means, uh, bribing, maybe you want to become an MP, you want to become a governor. The only sensible thing for that man when he takes over the office, he has three priorities. He will tell you, I want to, um, I'm bringing development. But in his heart, that person will have three priorities. One is to recoup what he has spent. Two, he has to accumulate for the next election. Three, if he's a strategist, he has to now think of how he can have extra so that in case he is not re-elected, he is safe, money-wise. So if that political culture of bribery and token is not going to end in this country, please don't make noise saying our politicians are corrupt. The politicians are a product of the society. It's not them. They, are not, they, they don't drop from heaven. It's us who make them. Then we have a second option, that is the public. The public must change its culture. There was a time in this country where citizens decided to arrest policemen taking bribes. It was a short-term instinct, but it happened, and policemen refused to take bribes along the roads. Today, they take it in the open, and even if they look at you and you have any, no, no, no problem, they'll tell you, Mze, auna kitu kidogo tu unyangalie. And that matatu that is being stopped, it has an engineer, it has a professor, it has an ex-military officer, and we keep quiet. We don't make any noise. Our only noise that we have is to blame the police. I am not defending the police, but the police becomes a product of a rotten society. The last one, which I whispered with to the Prime Cabinet Secretary, is about the institutions that we have. The institutions that we have must be strengthened. And I keep on taking pride that this country, if there's anything good about this country, is that this country has got a constitution that has established well-laid well institutions that should function for the prosperity of this country. So that's what I'm talking about, that the strategic pillar must look at the political culture and the public, they must change on how they do their business and their support, and then we look at institutions, that is the judiciary, the ODPP, the Office of the Auditor General, and all other uh, groups. So what are the other things that we need to do? If you look at this strategic plan, we are talking of building resilient, strong, and fun functioning institutions. We are talking of ESCC, ODPP, OAG, a judiciary, and others. Let us not keep on complaining, saying the judiciary is not working. The judiciary is not working because there's a problem on the other side also. 
maybe there's no, there's no seamless flow of activities. Why is the police not working? There's a problem. Where, why is the ESCC not meeting the expectation of the public? There's a problem. Why, is the uh, the, why are the laws having a deficit that they are not conducive to the prosecution of corruption cases? There's a problem. Now, that's the role of the politician. But let us not do uh, pinpointing of saying the problem is ESCC, the problem... Uh, the, the Auditor General has said, you don't blame the ESCC that uh, Kenya is corrupt because ESCC is not working. Uh, it can, it, ESCC is one of the components of the process of fighting cor corruption as a main agency. But there are other factors that in this strategic plan have been considered, and we are looking at uh, the media, a robust and free media that uh, informed the citizens about what is going on in the country, and informed and engaged uh, citizenry who proactively partic participate in governance process, what I've talked about, the political culture. Then we are talking of setting an ethical tone at the top, and we are very happy uh, as COESCC I can attest that we are very happy the president is very open uh, on the issue of the fight against corruption. Yesterday, I witnessed the swearing of, of the DPP. I was with the, uh, my, our chairman, the prime cabinet secretary was there, and the president talked of nothing but telling the DPP, you have to work with the other agency to address this problem called corruption. In the entire speech, he was talking about corruption, corruption, corruption. And you can see that he is very serious. On the issue of milestone, as a, as a, as a result of those close collaboration and cooperation and coordination among our ju ju uh, judicial system and the public, I think there is an improvement. Uh, 30 years ago, in such a function, you will never invite a judge to come and participate in such a function. Because at that time, Judiciary, they were clinging on one vocabulary, independence. We are independent. We cannot interact with anyone. Uh, those days where the only source of uh, news was the Kenya, was KBC, I think all those judges those days, me, I never saw them in my life. They, they used to be called uh, Justice, I don't know, Moira, Justice what? I think the only lucky people are those guys maybe who share the same church with those guys? Maybe on Sunday they will see them. <laughs> but some of us, especially those who are non-Muslim, I don't think we saw those, unless you are a culprit, eh? maybe you are there to be fried, you will see him. But uh, most of us never saw those people. We used to read their names in the newspaper. Today, here we are. We are inviting a judge who comes and gives uh, a speech, and we are talking of interdependency. Very, very important. We are through the NCAJ, we can interact with the Chief Justice and tell her about our problems, and you can see she is reacting to them. So the progress is not about the destination. One never finishes a progress. A progress is continuous, just like in life. When you are young, you want to be in secondary school. When you're in secondary school, you want to go to the university. When you go to the university, I want to become an architect. When you become an architect, now you want to say, no, I'm not building small houses. I want big houses so that I can live a lot. You know, um, I'm trying to ridicule my chairman. You know, he's an architect by profession. So it goes on like that in life. There is nothing like we have stopped. Life continues. So this is a process that it will continue. After five years, we look at it. Where did we go wrong? And they say that in a strategic plan, if you can achieve 50%, that's, that's an A. Because it's very difficult to achieve 100%. So as we launch the new strategic plan, we intend to talk about uh, leveraging on technology. Technology reduces corruption a lot. Uh, and we want to design effective corruption prevention programs. Prevention is very, very important, and that is why the prevention department of ESCC go and do system reviews. But then we want to also amend the law that when we give prescription, we should be given powers to make sure that those organizations or department or ministries implement our recommendation. If they fail, we can take punitive support, uh, action against them. Then we are talking of enlisting support from the citizen. And uh, the four pillars, somebody has talked about them. Uh, it's about law enforcement, promotion of ethics and integrity, prevention of, pre prevention of corruption and, eth and ethical practices, and education and public awareness. I trust that this strategic plan will inspire uh, each one of us 
After all, it is our collective responsibility. I just whispered to Prime Cabinet Secretary that uh, on the government side, uh, Your Excellency, uh, one way of addressing this issue of corruption every day where you hear there are problems here and there, uh, institution must be strengthened. Uh, we have an established uh, workforce of 1,500 people approved by the Public Service Commission. Today we are about 790. In the last four years, there has been no tangible increment of our budget uh, that will allow us to absorb more stuff to fill that establishment. And this establishment goes concurrently with the strategic plan. So if that establishment is not realized, uh, you get punctured in your strategic plan when it comes to your implementation. And uh, Your Excellency, I can assure you of our commitment and dedication to execute our mandate in line with our core values of uh, fidelity to the law, integrity, teamwork, innovation, professionalism, and courage. Uh, sir, being one of the senior politicians in this country, there has always been noise that uh, when we sometimes nab some powerful people, the next thing is that we are being misused uh, politically. ESCC is a very neutral, professional organization that works within the law, and we do carry out our mandate in a very neutral way without any political interference. With these remarks, let me invite our chairman, uh, Bishop David Oginde, to make his remarks, and thereafter invite the chief guest uh, in order to give his keynote address. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for the CEO.